Canals have played a significant role in shaping the course of human civilization, facilitating trade, transportation, and irrigation systems across the globe. These man-made waterways are feats of engineering that connect nations and foster great economic growth. So for today's video, we're going to embark on a journey to explore the 15 biggest canals in the world. Number 15. The Corinth Canal the Corinth Canal, situated in Greece, isn't close to being the longest or the busiest canal in all the world, but because of the way it was built, it does hold the record for being the deepest of all. Cut through the narrow isthmus of Corinth, it connects the Gulf of Corinth in the Ionian Sea to the Saronic Gulf in the Aegean Sea, across a 4-mile or 6.4-kilometer stretch, and it enables ships to bypass the long route around the Peloponnese Peninsula, saving considerable time and resources. Although the canal was officially opened in 1893, the idea of its construction has had a long history. Emperor Nero of Rome was the first to actually start digging in the 1st century AD, but his efforts were cut short due to his premature death. The project lay dormant for centuries until it was picked up again in the late 19th century by a French engineering company, and even then, its construction was fraught with difficulties, including landslides and financial constraints. Its steep limestone walls reach heights of almost 300 feet, or about 90 meters, are incredible to see, but even from the beginning when it first opened, it's failed to be as commercially successful as it had been hoped. Due to its narrow width, susceptibility to erosion, the steep walls that funnel the wind, and the fact that the tides at each end aren't in sync so strong currents form in the lockless canal, it can only accommodate relatively small and light ships. This has limited its commercial significance in modern times, so it's now only mainly used for recreational and local water traffic. Number 14. St. Lawrence Seaway The St. Lawrence Seaway is a vast network of locks, canals, and channels in Canada and the United States that allows vessels to reach the Great Lakes from the Atlantic Ocean. This extremely important waterway is over 370 miles or 600 kilometers long and connects the mouth of the St. Lawrence River in the Atlantic to Lake Superior. Opened in 1959 after five years of construction, the seaway was the result of decades of diplomatic negotiations and technical planning. It was a monumental engineering project that involved not just the creation of various man-made structures, but also the relocation of a number of communities and the extensive alteration of landscapes along its route. The ultimate aim was to make the St. Lawrence River navigable by deep draft vessels and connect the industrial centers of the Great Lakes to the Atlantic Ocean, thereby streamlining maritime commerce. The seaway is made up of 15 locks, 13 in Canada and 2 in the U.S., and together they lift vessels a total of 550 feet or 168 meters and can accommodate ships of up to 744 feet or 225 meters. These locks function as elevators for ships, adjusting the water level to allow them to bypass rapids and other obstacles, with the most important part of the network being the Buhamwa Canal and the Welland Canal, and the Iroquois and Eisenhower locks. The St. Lawrence Seaway, it plays a significant role in the economic activity of the surrounding region, serving as a transport route for grain, iron ore, steel, and other commodities. It's influenced trade patterns and enabled cities all along its route to become key industrial centers and provides a link for vital international shipping between North America's heartland and the overseas markets. It has, though, brought environmental challenges with these benefits, mainly because the habitat disruption due to its construction and the introduction of invasive species through ballast water being discharged from ocean-going vessels, which have had a major impact on the ecosystem in the Great Lakes. Number 13. The Grand Union Canal the Grand Union Canal is the longest canal network in the UK and became the most important transport route in the country during the Industrial Revolution. It covers more than 137 miles, or 220 kilometers, and provided a crucial link from London to the Midlands, with one arm reaching the city of Leicester and the other with 166 locks going as far as Birmingham. It was a massive mega-project that was built during the late 18th and early 19th centuries and played a key role in facilitating the transport of goods such as coal, iron, and foodstuffs throughout the country during a time of rapid industrial growth. A network of different waterways was further added into the Grand Union Canal in 1929 with the aim of creating a more direct and efficient route between London and the industrial Midlands. The canal is most impressive for its series of locks, with the most famous being the Foxton and the Hatton Flight. Foxton Locks, located in Leicestershire, are the largest staircase locks on the English canal system, while the flight at Hatton, nicknamed the Stairway to Heaven, comprises 21 locks over 2 miles and is a marvel of Georgian engineering and ingenuity. 
Even with the decline of the canal's commercial use after the advent of railways, the Grand Union Canal has remained an important part of Britain's heritage, where today it's used mainly for leisure purposes. The towpaths are now enjoyed by walkers, cyclists, and runners, while its waters host countless narrow boats, canoes, and kayaks. As well as becoming a vital habitat for a number of species that would have otherwise struggled because of the development taking place across large swaths of the countryside. Number 12. Rhine Main Danube Canal The Rhine Main Danube Canal, which is also known as the Europa Canal, is a vital waterway in Europe that offers a direct link between the North Sea and the Black Sea. Extending across the width of Germany, it connects the Rhine, Main, and Danube rivers, which effectively establishes a navigable route that stretches from the Netherlands to Romania, which is a distance of over 2,100 miles, or 3,500 kilometers. It was built between 1960 and 1992, with the original plan being to facilitate commerce and boost the economic prosperity of the regions along it. This project brought together vast sections of two earlier canals, the Ludwig Canal and the Main Danube Canal, to turn them into a single navigable route. The actual man-made section of the canal is around 106 miles or 171 kilometers long and includes 16 locks to manage the altitude difference of about 574 feet or about 175 meters between the Main and Danube rivers. One of its most impressive features is the Continental Divide, a water bridge near Nuremberg that marks the watershed between two rivers. This spot where the water flows either north to the North Sea or east to the Black Sea has become a popular attraction for visitors. As has been the case with other canals that link the water system, there have been downsides to its construction because of the way it's given non-native species a way to establish themselves in new habitats and fundamentally change the ecosystem. But this was seen as a necessary consequence for the wider benefit the canal would offer. Although commercial shipping was the original reason for its construction, alternative transport methods have since been proven to be far more cost-effective. So now it's mainly used for recreational boating, with tourists able to enjoy river cruises that offer breathtaking views of the German countryside, historic towns, vineyards, and castles. Number 11. The Panama Canal the Panama Canal, a 51-mile or 82-kilometer waterway in Central America, was one of the most significant engineering achievements of the 20th century. Connecting the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, it revolutionized global maritime trade, providing a shortcut that eliminated the need for ships to navigate the treacherous Cape Horn route around the southernmost tip of South America, and instead allowed them to travel across the Isthmus of Panama. The idea of building a canal in that place was first suggested in the 16th century, but it wasn't until the late 19th century that engineering knowledge and the commercial need were great enough for it to be seriously looked at. Initial attempts by the French ended in failure due to the region's challenging terrain and the outbreak of tropical diseases, and subsequently the project was taken over by the United States, and it was finally successfully completed and opened in 1914. The canal operates by using a system of enormous locks that, once ship enter them, are raised by filling with water from Gatun Lake and then lowered by releasing the water back to the sea level. This intricate system allows vessels to cross the Continental Divide and was designed to accommodate a range of vessels known as Panamax, specifically designed to conform to its original size constraints. In 2007, to meet the demands of modern shipping, work began on a major expansion project that included a new set of locks, enabling the canal to handle larger, newer vessels. This expansion was opened in 2016 and significantly increased the canal's capacity. The Panama Canal has, since opening, become an essential artery for global trade, and consequently, it's also been a major contributor to Panama's economy, providing a huge source of income for the country. This did mean, however, that for a time, control over the canal had been a point of contention, and this culminated in the Torrijos-Carter Treaties in 1977, which led to Panama's full control of the waterway by the end of 1999. With global trade continuously increasing, it's only going to become even more important in the coming years, and it's the perfect example of how a shortcut like this can substantially reduce travel times, risks, and costs. Number 10. Volga Don Canal The Volga Don Canal is a waterway in the Russian Federation that connects two of the most important river systems in Europe, the Volga and the Don. This 63-mile or 101-kilometer-long canal forms a vital part of the unified deep water system of European Russia, which is a network of canals and rivers that extends across the western part of the country. Construction of the canal, designed by Sergei Zuk's Hydro Project Institute, began in 1948 and was completed in 1952. The effort was a considerable engineering achievement involving the construction of 13 locks to handle the elevation change between the two rivers, with the highest point reaching 289 feet, or 88 meters above sea level. 
but it was worth it because now it provides the shortest navigable route between the Caspian Sea, the Black Sea, and the open ocean, serving as an essential link for transport and commerce. It accommodates vessels of considerable size and has facilitated a more efficient and cost-effective means of moving goods, such as oil, coal, timber, and grain, between these with the rest of the world. Despite its relatively short length, the canal's strategic importance is second to none. It's contributed to the development of regions it passes through and has played a vital role in Russia's economy. Furthermore, its role in connecting the Caspian Sea to the world's ocean has broader international implications, particularly because the Caspian Sea's oil and gas resources, something Russia is looking to leverage even more with plans to construct another canal along the same route to increase the amount of shipping traffic that's able to use it. Number 9. Nara Canal The Nara Canal is a vital waterway that provides water for the irrigation and agricultural development of the Sindh region in Pakistan. Stretching over 226 miles, or 360 kilometers, it's one of the longest in the province and starts at the Gudu Barrage on the Indus River, extending to the Thar Desert in the southeast. It's not entirely man-made, though, and was originally a distributary channel of the Indus River. Works deepened it so a greater volume of water could pass through it, and now it provides 14,000 cubic feet a second, or 400 cubic meters per second, to a 3,100-square-mile region. Established during the British colonial era, the Nara Canal helps to irrigate this large area of arable land that would otherwise struggle due to the arid and semi-arid conditions of the region. More than just a source of irrigation, it directly sustains countless communities that relies on its waters for their livelihood and domestic needs as well. This has allowed a wide range of crops from staple food grains like wheat and rice to lucrative ones like cotton and sugarcane, so has enhanced food security and contributed greatly to the provincial and national economy. Despite its importance, there are a few issues being faced by the communities that rely on the canal. Salinity and waterlogging, both caused by inefficient water use and improper irrigation methods, threaten the sustainability of the canal and the agricultural productivity. In recent years, efforts to address these issues have been implemented, including the use of modern irrigation techniques and water management practices. There's also been a drive to enhance the structural integrity of the canal to ensure it'll continue to service the people and agriculture of Sinda. Number 8. The Houston Ship Canal The Houston Ship Canal is a vast artificial waterway located in southeast Texas in the United States. It extends from the city of Houston out to the Gulf of Mexico, and it serves as a conduit for ocean-going vessels, making it a vital route for trade and commerce in the region. With a length of approximately 52 miles or 84 kilometers, it was created by dredging Buffalo Bayou and Galveston Bay, as well as deepening a natural water course, and over the years it's been expanded to accommodate larger and larger ships, with a current width of 530 feet or 160 meters and a depth of 45 feet or 14 meters. It officially opened in 1914, when the first deep-water steamship used it to reach the port in Houston from New York, and has since seen the area become one of the world's busiest seaports, handling a diverse array of cargo, from oil and petrochemical products to consumer goods. Its role in oil and gas transport is particularly important, as Houston is a significant hub for the American energy industry, something that would have arguably been impossible had not it been for the creation of this canal. Along with the two main ports at the upstream terminus near Houston and the downstream terminus near the Gulf of Mexico, there's a large number of public and private terminals and berthing locations along the canal, such as the Barber's Cut Container Terminal, the Bayport Container Terminal, and the ExxonMobil Baytown Complex. This, of course, means that the channel directly contributes to the local and the national economy by supporting countless jobs, while the port industry is generating billions in economic value and the vast majority of employment opportunities in the region being linked to port services in some way. Number 7. White Sea – Baltic Sea Canal Standing as a reminder of political struggles in the 1920s and 30s in the Soviet Union, the White Sea Baltic Sea Canal, which is usually called the White Sea Canal, is a historic shipping route in Russia and a mega project that had one of the greatest human costs in the past century. Opened in 1933, it stretches around 141 miles, or 227 kilometers, of which 30 miles, or 48 kilometers, are man-made, and it connects the White Sea and the Arctic Ocean with Lake Onega, which is linked to the Baltic Sea and beyond. Its strategic location and construction marked a significant milestone in Soviet engineering and development, and promised at the time to supercharge the economy. This was one of the first major projects of the Stalin era, aimed to demonstrate the capability of the new Soviet state. But this desperation to make an impact led to the decision to use Gulag forced laborers to build it. 
Believed to have had a labor force of as many as 126,000 people, the conditions and treatment were cruel and treacherous, and it's estimated that between 12,000 and 25,000 people died before it was completed. The canal consists of a system of 19 locks, overcoming a height difference of about 335 feet or about 122 meters. And although it was described by Soviet authorities as being an engineering marvel at the time of its construction, its relatively shallow depth restricts the size of vessels that can use it. Today, it mostly accommodates small ships, barges, and leisure craft, as large commercial vessels cannot navigate it. Even with this limitation, it still plays an important role in regional trade and transport, as it allows for travel between the Arctic Ocean and the Baltic Sea, while avoiding the need to go around the Scandinavian Peninsula. Number 6. Mitteland Canal The Mitteland Canal, also known as the Mittelland Canal in German, is the longest artificial waterway in Germany. It extends around 202 miles or 325 kilometers from east to west and plays a vital role in the country's transportation network, which facilitates commercial navigation across the heartland of northern Germany. The canal was constructed in stages from 1905 to 1938, with the intention to link up the inland waterways of Western Europe with those in the east. It stretches from the Dortmund Ems Canal near the town of Rhein and passes through Unzabruck, Hanover, Braunschweig, and Magdeburg, and finally connects to the Elbe Havel Canal at Hohenwatha near Berlin. Along this route, the canal crosses several rivers, which require the construction of several aqueducts to allow the waterways to cross without interrupting each other. The Grill Aqueduct and the Minden Aqueduct, which enables the canal to cross over the Vesa River, are two of the most impressive, with the Minden Aqueduct seen as a masterpiece of engineering. The canal also features a number of locks that enable it to manage a total change in elevation of about 213 feet, or 65 meters. Its waterways are frequently used by commercial vessels transporting goods such as coal, agricultural projects, and iron ore, and over the years it's proved to be a vital piece of infrastructure that's contributed significantly to Germany's economy by providing an effective and efficient mode of transport. As well as this commercial importance, the Mitteland Canal also offers recreational opportunities too, with its calm waters and picturesque banks attracting boating enthusiasts, cyclists, and walkers. The canal's side paths in particular form a part of an extensive network of cycling and walking routes across northern Germany, offering scenic views and tranquil settings, and form a large part of the green travel initiatives in the region. Number 5. The Erie Canal it's not often that a piece of infrastructure like a canal can be so important that songs are written in its honor, but in many ways, the Erie Canal was one of the reasons the United States was able to become the country that it is today. It's an incredible feat of engineering that stretches a distance of around 363 miles or 584 kilometers from Albany on the Hudson River to Buffalo at Lake Erie, and is widely recognized as a transformative project that shaped the development of the country in the 19th century. It was conceived to create a navigable water route from New York City and the Atlantic Ocean to the Great Lakes, and construction began in 1817, with it being completed in 1825 under the stewardship of the then-Governor DeWitt Clinton, whose obsession with the project earned it the initial nickname Clinton's Ditch. The opening of the Erie Canal changed things forever, though, as it dramatically reduced the cost and time of shipping goods across the country, which had a major effect on trade and migration, led to a surge of westward expansion, turning cities like Buffalo, Rochester, and Syracuse into significant industrial hubs, and making New York City the nation's primary port. By unlocking the rich resources of the Midwest for the Atlantic seaboard in Europe, it fueled a boom in agriculture and industry, and seeing how successful it was, it sparked a wave of canal construction across the country, which is why the period is often known as the Canal Era. It would continue being a crucial transport artery for almost 50 years, but with the advent of railroads in the mid-19th century, it led to a decline in its commercial relevance. Efforts to overcome this in the 20th century saw the canal enlarged and modernized, and becoming part of the New York State Canal System, where it became integral to the regional transport. Although it never regained the national significance that it once had, today the Erie Canal is primarily used for recreational purposes, but serves as a testament to American ingenuity and a symbol of the country's industrial heritage. Along the banks you'll now find countless museums, historical cities, and annual festivals along its route that celebrate its rich history and cultural significance. And you may even be familiar with the folk song Low Bridge Everybody Down, which was written about it, and it's often simply called the Erie Canal Song. Number 4. Kiel Canal The Kiel Canal, also known as the nord Ostsee Canal, or the North Sea-Baltic Sea Canal, is a waterway that connects the North Sea to the Baltic Sea. 
duh. Stretching across northern Germany, this artificial canal has played a crucial role in international trade and maritime transportation since its completion in 1895. At around 61 miles or 98 kilometers long, it provides a shortcut for ships that means they can avoid sailing around the Jutland Peninsula, which saves on average a journey of over 250 nautical miles. And it also means they miss the hazardous weather of the Danish Straits. The idea constructing of a canal along this route dates back centuries, as various rulers and governments recognized the potential benefits of a direct link between the two seas. It wasn't until the late 19th century, though, that it became a reality. The construction of the canal involved extensive excavation work and engineering development, including the creation of large locks to accommodate vessels of different sizes. Today it serves as an important trade route, enabling efficient transportations of goods and reducing the distance and time it takes for ships to reach their destinations. It's a key artery for international trade, connecting ports in northern Europe with global markets, particularly as it can accommodate a wide range of vessels, from cargo ships and container carriers to cruise liners and naval vessels. Annually, thousands of ships navigate through the Kiel Canal, carrying millions of tons of cargo and contributing significantly to the economic development of the region. The Kiel Canal has also become a popular destination for marine tourism thanks to its scenic surroundings, with picturesque landscapes and charming towns along the canal's route that attract tourists and boating enthusiasts from around the world. The canal is known for the Kiel Week, an annual sailing event that features sailors, spectators, and visitors alike who take part in festivities such as regattas, cultural events, and entertainment, making it one of the largest sailing events in the world. Number 3. Indira Gandhi Canal the Indira Gandhi Canal, which is originally known as the Rajasthan Canal, is a huge irrigation project in India that's transformed the arid regions of Rajasthan. Named after the former Prime Minister of India, Indira Gandhi, the canal travels across the Thar Desert, providing a lifeline to the dry region. And at around 404 miles or 650 kilometers, it's easily one of the longest canals in the world. The first plan to divert water from the Himalayan rivers to Rajasthan was first put forward in the 19th century, but it was only in the 1960s that the project gained momentum, with construction beginning in 1958 and taking several decades to complete. It was designed to bring water from the Bias and Sutlej rivers in Punjab to the arid regions of Rajasthan and provides irrigation to around 4,300 square miles or 11,000 square kilometers of land in the Tar Desert. The canal has had a transformative impact on the region by turning previously dry, dusty regions into fertile agricultural fields, boosting agricultural productivity and enabling farmers to cultivate a variety of crops. The canal has facilitated the growth of wheat, cotton, mustard, and vegetables, meaning the local people can not only feed themselves but are able to provide these much sought-after goods to the rest of the country. As well as irrigation, the canal has also brought a constant supply of drinking water to the towns and villages along its course, and it's also supported the establishment of industries that rely on water, such as agro-processing units and textile mills, which have further created employment opportunities for thousands of people. Unlike other canals that can have a destructive impact on the environment, the fact that it brings water to such a dry region has meant that forests and large regions of vegetation have been able to thrive. This has actually increased the biodiversity in the area and has seen the re-emergence of some species that hadn't been seen for a long time. Number 2. Suez Canal The Suez Canal, arguably the most important strategic maritime passageway in the world, is a man-made waterway that connects the Mediterranean Sea to the Red Sea. It's around 120 miles or 193 kilometers long and passes through the Isthmus of Suez in Egypt, offering a significant shortcut for vessels transiting between Europe and Asia because it eliminates the need to sail around the often dangerous Cape of Good Hope at the southern tip of Africa. The Suez Canal's origins can be tracked back to the mid-19th century, with the beginning of a decade-long construction project in 1859 by French diplomat Ferdinand de la Cip. After overcoming significant engineering challenges and political difficulties, the canal was officially opened in 1869, and that event was attended by high-profile figures of the era, including Empress Eugenie, who was the wife of Napoleon. Over the years, the canal has undergone several expansions and improvements to accommodate the ever-growing demands of international trade and maritime transport, and today it can facilitate the passage of some of the world's largest container ships. In 2015, Egypt opened a significant expansion project named the New Suez Canal, which added a new lane and deepened the existing canal, which increased its capacity from 49 to 97 ships per day and reduced waiting times at either end, too. The Suez Canal's strategic and economic significance has often made it the focal point of international tensions, though, the most notable of which was the Suez Crisis of 1956, when Egypt nationalized the canal and prompted an unsuccessful military intervention by Britain, France, and Israel. 
This event significantly shifted the balance of power in the Middle East and highlighted the decline of European colonial influence. More recently, in 2021, the canal made headlines again when the giant ship container Ever Given ran aground, blocking the passage for six days. With an estimated 12% of world trade passing through the canal, this incident created a significant bottleneck, delaying billions of dollars worth of goods and showing just how crucial a transport artery it has become. Number 1. Beijing Hangzhou Grand Canal the Beijing Hangzhou Grand Canal, which is often simply referred to as the Grand Canal, is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and an engineering superpiece. Stretching over 1,100 miles or 1,700 kilometers, it's the longest and oldest artificial waterway in the world, extending from Beijing in the north to Hangzhou in the south. Work on individual parts of the Grand Canal began as far back as the 5th century BC, with these sections first connected to one another around a thousand years later during the Sui Dynasty. It was a monumental effort to improve the transportation system, facilitate the movement of goods, and unify different regions of China. And once this was complete, it had created an incredible infrastructure achievement. Maintaining such an extensive waterway has always been challenging, though, as over the centuries it's faced neglect, natural disasters, and siltation, sometimes causing it to fall into disrepair. Between the 13th and 17th centuries, huge parts of this canal network were completely rebuilt, along with extensions to reach Beijing. And due to its age in modern times, there are now full-time crews tasked with renovating stretches of it. The canal played a vital role in helping to reunify North and South China, as well as allowing for the movement of food to supply military forces as they traveled throughout the country, which meant that during times of war, the locks and dikes along its routes were often target for enemies, because blocking the canal would have brought a significant strategic benefit. Over more than 2,500 years, the canal has contributed significantly to China's economic development and promoted trade between agricultural south and northern parts of the country, as well as encouraging cultural exchange. It played a vital role in transporting rice from the fertile Yangtze River Delta to feed the populations in the north, especially the imperial capital Beijing, but also became a cultural corridor as it was along the banks that some of China's most iconic industries such as silks, tea, and porcelain developed and they use this waterway to distribute throughout the country. Throughout its history, the canal has inspired a range of art, literature, and folklore, and even today it remains an important transport route, both because of its low cost of use and because, for some goods, its use can reduce demand on the road and rail networks. I'll see you next time. Watch our Waves playlist for more Top 15 videos about massive waves. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best wave videos. The Top 5 Show has launched channel memberships. Thank you to our channel members.